Hey everyone, welcome to EOTO Technologies. Today we have the Low Echo Low Max 2 for review. So let's get started. The Low Echo Low Max 2 is Low Echo's flagship of 2016. It houses a 6 GB of RAM and a massive 5.7 Quad HD display with a powerful Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 chip. The Lomax 2 comes in a big box to start with, a quick charge 3.0 enabled AC adapter, a USB Type-C cable. The biggest change in the device is the absence of a 3.5mm audio jack. Instead, Loeco has provided a USB-C earphone, though a USB-C to 3.5 converter also has been given. The mid-range segment has become increasingly competitive of late, with the likes of the OnePlus 3 and Mi 5 readily available. So is the Lomax 2 able to stand out? Let's find out. The Lomax 2 has clean lines and chamfered edges comprising of a metal unibody construction. The metal design is as premium as it can get and Lomax 2 is extra solid. Many people we know had some quality control issues with their Lo 2 but this has not been the case with the Lomax 2 unit that we have received. The fingerprint sensor is located below the camera and offers the ability to unlock the phone even when the screen is off. It is very slow when compared to OnePlus 3 and the Robin. The unmarked capacitive keys at the front may take some time getting used to. I often had to search around for the back button in the dark and encountered sluggishness sometimes. The left side of the Lumax 2 houses the lone dual SIM tray. The right one has the volume rocker and the power lock key, both made of metal. The top has the IR blaster while the USB Type-C port, the primary mic and the loudspeaker are located at the bottom. Overall, the Lomax 2 is quite heavy at 185 grams and 100 use is very tough. The design is good but lacks any distinction. Coming to the display, the Lomax 2 comes with flagship worthy resolution of 1440 by 2560 pixels. It's an IPS LCD panel. Uh, there are no fancy curved glass on top of the Lomax 2. In fact, there is no toughened glass. We would highly suggest you put a tempered glass protector as soon as possible. The viewing angles of the 5.7 inch display are excellent and colors don't shift, though the contrast is very poor. The OnePlus 3 hands down has a better display due to better contrast and blackness. These are the perks that you get with an AMOLED panel. Coming to performance, the base variant of the phone retails for 2290-999 rupees and for that you can get a quad core 2.15 GHz Snapdragon 820 system on chip. 4GB of RAM, 32GB of storage, a 21MP main shooter and a 8MP front shooter. It has an IR blaster, 3100mAh battery and it lacks NFC. The other model or the variant, 6GB of RAM and 64GB of storage will be, which will be available for 29999 The Lomax 2 offers a 21MP camera which has optical image stabilization, face detection autofocus and dual LED flash at the front. There is an 8MP shooter which is more than an adequate for selfies, but it lacks wide-angle lenses. The camera app is heavily inspired from Apple's iOS. The camera UI is simple. You can swipe through the different modes like photo, pano, video, and slow-mo. Live filters are also available. There is no dedicated manual mode, but you can adjust the ISO, exposure, and white balance by heading into the settings. Panoramas come out very impressive on the Lumax 2. The resulting images are quite big in size. Coming to the software, the Lomax 2 offers Loeco's EUI 5.8 which runs on Android Marshmallow. It has one Bluetooth app. The UI is pretty good. The app drawer is missing and the quick toggles have been moved from the notification sheet to the recent apps menu. But the overall experience is really good. We hardly encountered any bugs. The recent apps menu is very similar to Control Center on the iOS. Loeco's proprietary search pane will let you do a system-wide search across the phone's content. You can fire it up by swiping up anywhere on the home screen. We do not have any complaints and you should feel pretty much at home if you are moving in from iOS. The Lomax 2 has CD-LA technology which is continuous digital lossless audio. The manufacturer's USB-C in-ear headphones retail for 2000 rupees, and for the price they offer a bright soundstage. But the biggest issue with the Lure Echo's in-ear headphones is that the plug-in into the USB-C port, which is also used for charging, which means you cannot charge your device while the earphones are in use. The technology is proprietary to Lure Echo devices only. The Lure Max 2 has surprisingly decent power considering the phone's huge display, the battery 
has quick charge 3.0 and another 30 minute charging test the phone's battery charge from 0% up to 56% using the supplied charger it is a 3100 milliamp hour battery like said earlier and it has a few software changes like ultra long standby during sleep align wake ups for wake up optimization and schedule power on off the low echo low max was a great offering it has equal number of pros and cons but the pros are easily able to outperform the cons the battery is good the design is good as well as the software which is bug free and lag free but you will either love it or hate it because it is subjective this phone is not recommended for photography junkies because of poor low light performance and the absence of a very clean and friendly manual control the low max 2 is highly recommended when considered along with the super tenement bundle that low echo is offering the deal becomes even more tempting the 4gb version should work for almost everyone and if you can go higher it can even compete with the one plus three thank you for coming to yoda technologies for the review do not forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel we have a lot of more stuff coming and do like us and follow us on twitter thank you